I'm Reverend Rebecca, and it is a joy to be worshiping with you online on this Christmas Eve. I've brought with me a special friend this evening. This is Baby Yoda. Okay, it's all right if you're laughing. This is a little stuffed green toy with big floppy ears and big black eyes, and if you look underneath his scarf, he has a little smile. As silly as this thing seems, believe it or not, I have been told that Baby Yoda and anything Baby Yoda related is the hot toy this year for Christmas. You know how every year there's a big popular toy? I'm gonna date myself, but way back when I was a youngin, Furby was the really popular thing. And then one year it was Tamagotchi. Another year I heard from parents that they absolutely had to get their kids a Tickle Me Elmo. Well, apparently one of the things this year that everybody's snatching up off of shelves is Baby Yoda. Well, I'm just as guilty as the next person. When it comes to Christmas presents, I have a soft spot for tchotchkes and stuffies. And recently, Jeff and I have started watching the new Star Wars miniseries found on Disney Plus where Baby Yoda makes an appearance. But whether you're not a Star Wars fan, I think it's easy to admit that he is really cute and really plushy. The problem is though, that Baby Yoda, for all the cute and plushiness, was a little disappointing when I got him. You see, Jeff and I had watched this series, he doesn't even stand up, there we go. Jeff and I had watched this series on television and it was one of the big things people were really hyping up and we were really surprised how much we enjoyed it. I particularly enjoyed this cute character. I really, really, really wanted one. And I nagged Jeff, I said, Jeff, give me a baby Yoda. Wouldn't it be so cute just to have a baby Yoda? And he said, well, what are you gonna do with it? And I said, I don't know, but I would like one. Well, poor Jeff, it was the holiday season. It was very recently actually. And Jeff, poor Jeff had to go around and try to find one of these stuffed things. He went to Target, he went to Walmart, he went to Boss Cobbs, and eventually he was able to find one little stuffed baby Yoda. When he brought it home to me, he didn't even make me wait for Christmas Eve. Usually in our family, we exchange uh, gifts on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, but he didn't even make me wait because I had been complaining how much I wanted one. He gave it to me and I opened it up and I looked at it and I was smiled at its little face and then I was done. I wasn't quite sure what to do with it. It is cute and I do like it, but I couldn't help but have this feeling of disappointment when I finally got one. You see, this Christmas time, perhaps for you, I know for me, it's felt a lot less like Christmas than it has in other years. In the past, Christmas was all about gathering with family and singing songs and singing carols and having cookies and watching the kids and our family open their presents. But this year, everything's different. Way back in March, you might remember, uh, it felt like we were really taken by surprise when we had to close our church buildings in order to keep everyone safe. And for the first time ever, we celebrated Easter at home using the advances of online technology to connect with one another. Now, all the holiday shopping or the cute plushies or the new hot gift of the season just can't seem to bring back the feeling of Christmas. The whole world's kind of felt out of order and out of joint since this whole thing started. As the months have drawn on and as the time of year has grown darker and darker, I can't help but think about another dark time. You see, we like to think that baby Jesus was born into a world that was really different from our own. But baby Jesus was born into a world that was dark and dangerous and perilous. In fact, baby Jesus was born into a people who lived under the shadow of an empire very different from the Star Wars empire. Let's put him away. Baby Jesus was born into a people that were crushed under the empire of Rome, an oppressed people in a time dark and dangerous, a time of war and famine and disease, just like now. 
We like to think that the old times, the biblical times are different from our own, but actually the world is very, very much the same. Some things just never change. And so when we think about why we give presents at Christmas time, and when we think about where we want our focus to be, it's really easy and really tempting to want to put our focus on secular things. But right now the word world is hurting and in search of something precious and important and sacred. It's tempting to fill it up with material things, with busyness. But in reality, what the world needs now, at Christmas time more than ever, is Jesus. And whether or not you're celebrating Christmas in the safety of your own home, with us online, or with a small congregation, however you are celebrating, I hope that you can find a very special place in your heart for the Christ child this holiday season. You see, when we tell the Christmas story, we talk all so often about the popular character Christmas of the tale, characters of the Christmas tale. We talk about Mary and Joseph and even the innkeeper who told them that there was no room at the inn. We talk about the shepherds and the wise men and the angels. But a lot of times we skip over just how dark and tragic the world was and how in need, desperately in need, people were for baby Jesus, just like we're so desperately in need right now. In the Bible, when we tell the Christmas story, there's this section that a lot of times we don't even read in church on Sunday, on Christmas Sunday. It's the section that, if you look in your own Bible, you might see that it's labeled at the top as the slaughter of the innocents. When Jesus was born into the world, he was born during the reign of the earthly King Herod. And King Herod was a corrupt king. Remember, he was part of the evil empire of Rome. And Herod was so intimidated when he got word of the possibility of this newborn baby king, this new king somewhere that he decreed that all of the infant boys, ages two and under, should be put to death. Herod initiated a genocide in an attempt to extinguish the light of the world that the Christ child brought with him. It's at that point that the Holy Family fled as refugees to Egypt. And the scripture tells us that the wailing of the mothers when they lost their children was heartbreaking and it's memorialized in the Psalms. A lot of times we want to dust over this tragic part of the Christmas story. I know I would rather sing hymns about angels from the realms of glory. But I think right now, when our world is in so much pain, when there's so much unknown about the future, when we don't know what lies ahead and what lies behind us is tragic and sad. This is the time to realize that it is into this mess, into this darkness, into this hurting world. This is the time when the Christ child comes. This is the time when we need God most. And this is the time when God shows up. God's time is not our time and love does not wait. Whether or not we have purchased all the new toys, whether or not we have the cookies baked, whether or not we have the tree decorated, Christmas will come. That's a word of hope because that means that right now, if you don't feel like Christmas because you are suffering or you are alone or you are sick or you have lost a friend or a loved one, know that it is into this darkness, into these darkest, saddest times that God sends God's light and God's love. God sent Emmanuel, God with us, for just such a time as this. Jesus Christ put on skin and bone and came down to us as in Christmas time as love incarnate for such a broken and tragic time as this. I've heard so many people talking about trying to get in the Christmas spirit, trying to capture that feeling 
But friends, I think that the true spirit of Christmas is very much epitomized by the gift and the grace of the Holy Spirit. When we talk about God's grace, when we talk about God's love, it is important that there is nothing we can do to earn the gift of God's love to earn the gift of hope, to earn the gift of salvation. God's love is freely given to you and I. This world did nothing to deserve the birth of the Christ child. It was a dark and sinful place. And yet God chose to give us the gift of Jesus. This is good news that I think we as a people need to hear. As this dark time seems to stretch on and on, maybe you are having a hard time finding hope. But I want to tell you that the things of this world do not last. Remember King Herod? The only reason anyone talks about him anymore is because of the part he played in the biblical narrative. The reign of Herod was brief all things considered, especially when considered in the time span of eternity. But the reign of Christ was long. Herod was a brutal and corrupt king, full of wealth and power, earthly power. But in contrast, Jesus was a good and divine king, a king of kings and lord of lords, wonderful counselor, prince of peace. And although he was not born into a palace, Herod had the palace, but born instead into a humble stable, that in and of itself is a symbol of the inversions that we celebrate at Christmas time. When Mary opened her mouth and sang the Magnificat, she sang because God, when he sent the Christ child, turned the world upside down. She sang about how God the Father filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Friends, this Christmas time and always, I encourage you to take hope and to take heart. At Christmas, we celebrate that God can do the impossible, that nothing is impossible with God. At Christmas, we celebrate that God turned the world upside down, that God stooped down to come and be among us, that Emmanuel, God with us, put on flesh and bone and came into the mess and the darkness of our lives. Friends, if you hear only one thing this Christmas, I encourage you to hear this. God is with us. Throughout all of Advent, we sang, O come, O come, Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means God with us. Friends, whether or not you celebrate Christmas in a church building, whether or not you celebrate Christmas at home, whether you're with friends or family, or whether it's just you and God, know that nothing is too dark. Nothing is too tragic that in the midst of darkness and tragedy, God will come. Herod tried his best to extinguish the light of Christ and he failed. Nothing can put out the light of Christ. Nothing can put out the light of Christmas. Next year, there will be a different hot Christmas present item than Baby Yoda. That type of thing changes from year to year to year. The only thing that never changes, the only thing that stays the same is God. God alone, God the Father, God the Son, God omnipotent, God the Holy Spirit, God with us, God omnipresent, that never changes. Friends, it's okay to be a little sad this Christmas. But just know that whatever you're going through, whatever you're feeling, whatever it is, there is still Christ, there is still hope, there is still light, there is still Christmas. From my church family and all our church family to yours, Merry Christmas.